Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. To Peter and Ruffy's football show, I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tam McManus here with me. It's great to have your company. If you would like to like, share and follow our programme on Facebook, we'd be delighted with you doing that. And also on YouTube, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button now and you'll be with us as part of the football family. We're also on Periscope and Twitter at PLZ Soccer. So lots to look forward to. Great to have your company. Ruffy and Tam are here and uh, I have to say it's great for people tuning in who are tuning in on our Facebook and our YouTube and Periscope Ruffy on the basis that they're not in a mile long queue to go to a McDonald's. Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't believe that when I read it this morning. I really couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, I know. I mean, if it had been a queue to go into a pub or something, I could have understood that, but uh, I, I just can't understand how. Not, nothing against McDonald's, as you know. Uh, but yeah. uh, I, I, ju I just can't believe the necessity queue for, for two hours for a for a hamburger. Uh, yes, but, and uh, let's let, let's let's hope Kenny Walker's not listening. Uh, but yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> That's, my, that's uh, what I was just about to say there. <laughs> go on, go on, Tom. My, go on, Tom. Tell us your, my, your mates in a queue. <laughs> no, my brother done it yesterday. Unbelievable. My brother texts me, says I'm waiting in a queue in McDonald's. And he was in a one up at Springburn uh, near my mum's house, so I, cou I couldn't believe it. Two hours he was for a, 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 a chicken sandwich meal. I, I, I can't believe it. Oh. It's mental. The world, the world went mad. <laughs> <laughs> As indeed. No, no, I don't mean any kind of a discredit to uh, McDonald's. I just think there was a wow, an hour in a queue. Give me peace. Anyway, uh, it's good. Um, it's Ruffy queuing to get into a hairdresser, says Craig Bar Barber. Craig, good point. Ruffy's been doing it himself. I've been doing it myself. Uh, Tom's Peter's certainly been doing it himself as well. <laughs> He's a wee fan. He's a wee fan. I'll tell you. Sam, I bought the Clippers and I've got it down to a two. I can't go a one because it'd just be mental, especially with this ball heat. But nevertheless, it's uh, it's we've all been we've all been at it. Hi to Gary, uh, Gary McCann who joins us, Paul McGurk, Tommy Adams as well, uh, John Strelecki, John Black, Paul McLennan, uh, Rab Kennedy, John Dutton. So many people joining us. Chris Bain, who's in Finland. Have we had Finland on the show before, Ruffy? I'm not so sure. Mm. No, we haven't had many from Finland or the Scandinavian countries. Uh, this is a new one. Maybe we're opening up avenues all over the world. Well, the good news is we could go to Finland for our end of season party, Tam. But uh, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, 13 pounds a pint and 15 straws is not a good idea. That's all I'm telling you. Um, simple as that. Uh, have you been to Finland, Tam? I actually went. I went to Finland uh, in pre-season with Hibs uh, for eight days with Bobby Williamson, and uh, we went for eight days with three games and with five nights out. Uh, so un unsurprisingly, we lost our first six games of the season, <laughs> <laughs> in including a five-one tank tanking at Tyne Castle. And I can remember Bobby Williamson coming in for crisis talks after about six games. You know, none of us won a game. And they come in and says, "What is it, boys? Is it the training? Is it is it me? I mean, come on, we need to win to sort this out." And I felt like saying, "Bobby, I'm still sweating out Finnish lager eh, for the pre-season <laughs> that you took us on <laughs> because it, it was absolute chaos. So just we, we just sit in the bevy for for constantly for eight days." <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you are. A moment of honesty on pre-season trips, I have to tell you. <laughs> it was tremendous uh, to me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, absolutely sounded tremendous, uh, I have to tell you. Uh, we're going to talk to quite a lot of people um, with regards to the virtual season tickets. Um, I'm going to give a couple of people a mention. Um, the first one I'm going to mention is Miles O'Neill. Miles is 60 today uh, and his mate Jerry uh, is with him. They're in uh, Perth in Western Australia. They are outside at the moment having <laughs> a beer, enjoying the show. And Ruffy, that is fantastic that, you know, guys who are expats just tuning in want to talk about football and they're having a beer as well. 
Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I believe they, they tune in every day, so they're, they're well up to what's happening here. Uh, I, I think the weather over there uh, certainly wasn't as good as what it was here a couple of days ago, but I'm sure the boys can put up with that, and I'm sure they'll have a great birthday, and I'm sure they will be swallowing a few beers uh, as we speak on this show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just on a, a more sombre note, I would like to pass on our condolences and our thoughts and prayers to Reno Gattuso and the family. I had the good fortune to interview Reno on a couple of occasions. He's a great lad uh, and really a sad time to lose his sister. So all our thoughts uh, on the football show and our prayers go out to Reno Gattuso and his family at this very difficult time. And another man, I make no bones about it. Uh, I'm quite lucky. It just depends on the way uh, you're brought up, I suppose. There are a lot of people that I have and Ruffy will testify to this as you know uh, people that I I loved watching as footballers and, and when you meet them you 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 just think they're absolutely fantastic I mentioned John Robertson of Nottingham Forest yesterday but I'm going to mention another player that I loved watching and had the good fortune to see him play uh, is Alec Cropley his son Ross uh, just dropped me a wee line Alec not in the best of fettle at the moment. The last time I saw him uh, was in a, a pub in Edinburgh where I was doing a little sports dinner. I got my photograph taken with him then. Um, and every time I actually ran into him, Ruffy, I made a point of getting my photograph taken with him because brilliant lad, great player. Yeah, he certainly was. Uh, he followed in the sort of uh, footsteps of Peter Maranello, that kind of that kind of player, you know. And certainly at Hibs, he's an absolute legend. Uh, you did meet him, Peter, at Easter Road as well, that day that uh, all the Hibs, Hibs sort of legends were there for, I think it was Pat Stanton to, to order Pat, yeah. and uh, you're right, you know, he was there, and it uh, didn't look great, but he was there, he was m mingling with all the ex-players and chatting away, and it's amazing, you know, it doesn't matter what situation you are health-wise, if you're there with your ex-mates and you're reminiscing about games you've played in, uh, it just puts a smile on your face, and it, it made him very happy that day to meet up with a lot of the boys of his era. Well, I, I can tell you, Tam, and you, you'd be amazed at this, but I, I actually can remember my mother saying to me, we, we are going to see a really good team today. Uh, and, and she just could not stop because we used to go and watch football, not just, um, you know, Celtic in the early years. We would go and see other teams and appreciate other players and other, and other teams as well. And she said, we're going to see a Hibs team today that uh, are special and, and Cropley was part of that and, and Ruffy's just mentioned there I remember John Brownlee, Eric Shadler John Blackley um, I had the great fortune Tam, to play with John Blackley who was wearing what can only be described as uh, a pair of giant Michael Jordan trainers and he had a cigar out when we were playing 11 asides he was still better than every one of the rank rotten 21 other players on the park, he was magnificent so Alec Cropley for me is top man Tam yeah, I've met him a lot of times when I was at Hibs. Um, he was always in at the games, along with Pat Stanton and some of the guys you mentioned. Alec was a, a cracking guy, you know, a proper legend at Hibs. The Hibs fans hold him in very, very high esteem. So it's sad that, to hear that he's not doing too well. So, listen, fingers crossed he can come through whatever he's coming through because, um, you know, we, we, we actually met him not that long ago and he was in decent fettle. So let's just hope we can get back to that. Because the Hibs fans will all be saying a wee prayer for him anyway. Yeah, good point, Alex. I think you were in that photograph, Tam, the last time I got a photograph. I was, yeah, yeah. You were there that day, weren't you? Yeah. Is that when you fixed them to win the heads or tails? The 60 quid? No, no, no. I'm, sure. Shut it, will you? <laughs> I'm, I'm is... sure you fixed it. <laughs> it's just an, that's just an allegation in your part, by the way. Right, okay. <laughs> I just have right. to say to you. Yeah, uh, to be fair, yes, it was absolutely a great day. <laughs> you know, one of those toss the coin drop and you're thinking he's a legend. He, he can do with the 60 quid. And the other boy's 18 and, you know, he's got 60 quid and change in his pocket. He's not winning it. Anyway, I make, I make no uh, apologies for that, Tam, to be honest with yeah. you. I've forgotten all about that. Alan Gold's out there in Norway. Hi to Alan as well, who's joining us on the show. That's uh, so many people joining us. Uh, John Craw, who's out there on Facebook as well. I'll mention people on YouTube too, but um, I just thought I'd mention a few people there that are worthy of our thoughts at this moment. So, virtual season ticket. Sky, SPFL have announced this, uh, and that means that we will get the season started. There won't be fans inside the ground, but you can purchase a virtual season ticket What's your initial reaction, Ruffy? Well, if you just explain it to me a wee bit more, Peter, is the, vit the, vir the virtual 
through Sky or is it through your club? Is your club getting the, the revenue from the the visual? I think that games? that's still to be decided. I think that's still to be confirmed. Well, here's my take on this. Here's how I think it's going to work. This is just the early thoughts on it. But here's the statement that came out from uh, the, the, the deal that's been struck or the agreement uh, from the uh, SPFL. The SPFL and Sky Sports have agreed terms that provide a framework for the top flight of Scottish football to resume in August. The Scottish Premiership clubs will create a virtual season ticket, providing an alternative source of match day income, while social distancing measures prevent <coughs> fans from attending matches. During the 2020-21 season, each Premiership club will be able to sell a package to season ticket holders to watch all home games. The SPFL and Sky have also agreed to spread the financial settlement for the games unable to complete it in the season just gone, 2019-20, across the term of the new five-year contract, providing security and financial stability to the competition and its clubs. Here's what I think might happen, Tam. I might be wrong, but I would suggest to you that when people purchase a virtual season ticket from the club, that will allow them access through their own special code to Club <clears throat> TV, who will have their, as ever, their commentators providing uh, their commentary of that actual coverage of that game. They'll get a clean feed of every game covered potentially with maybe four, maybe ten cameras. Who knows? Uh, they'll all determine them on their home game, but they'll get coverage from their Club TV. I think it would be even... I think it would be an enormous thing if, if Sky were suddenly to to suggest, well, if you want to watch it, it's across all our Sky TV network. I, I think this is a streaming service within the clubs. Yeah, I think it is. And I think a lot of fans will be delighted, to be honest. I think it's a great idea. I think a lot of clubs will be, you know, been wanting for years to, to, to watch all their, own, all their own home games on their own TV channel, their own club TV. I think for the likes of Motherwell and Kilmarnock, who are maybe not on the TV as much, you know, I look at 48 Sky games, I think the majority of them will be Celtic and Rangers games. So for the other clubs outside the old firm, I think it's fantastic. And a couple of questions that, I've, that I had, um, surely that the, the people who have already bought season tickets um, for the real season will now go on and uh, will get that for free. Right, Tom. I mean, I think that's that. There'll be some arrangement in place. I just wonder uh, what that price will be, uh, Ruffy. We were talking about. I was talking to one of my mates today, and we were wondering if that price will be uh, two hundred, three hundred pounds. All the home games. How many home games does it cover? Uh, will it cover? Scottish Cup games, uh, you just wonder what's in the package to get you all the home games. It's still to be obviously <coughs> cleared up, but nevertheless, I think if you've already bought the season ticket, they will say to you, okay, here indeed is the yeah. price of it all. If you get some kind of refund, you get a refund on it. And I think that's I think that's probably the, the fairest way to look at it, Tom. Yeah, as I was just going to go on and speak about there, I think that the people who have already purchased season tickets, actual real season tickets, should obviously get their service for free. I think it's asking a lot for, for fans to shell out for a season ticket and for a virtual season ticket. So I think they'll be I think they'll be covered by the clubs. Um I think for, for fans abroad, you know, expats, guys my mother will fans, St. Murn fans, guys abroad who never get to see their home games. I think that's a fantastic facility for them as well. I think it'll make clubs a lot of money. I think away games, you know, by a lot of fans say Hibs are playing Aberdeen at Pataudry. You know, would, would there be a service for Hibs supporters to maybe pay Aberdeen TV to watch that game? You know, so the <coughs> club, I think the money's staying within the clubs, which I think is a, is a big deal, which I think is great. You know, if the money stays in between all the clubs, you know, I think that that's very much needed in this time I, I need. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing that I, I uh -huh. think, and I'm... Forgive me for forgive me for being cynical. There's a positive aspect to it because technology now is changing so dramatically, Ruffy, that I would suggest to you that uh, you know this will be uh, a moment in time where suddenly the clubs will have access to a huge amount of people and data because they've committed to this virtual season ticket. That's the the first mm -hmm. thing. It will open up again a change in the way people think about how they watch games because they'll be used to then this feeling of it's a Saturday, it's three o'clock, I can now watch the game. 
uh, live any any of the home games for your team. Uh, so that will revolutionise it. And then, of course, once people slowly over a period of time, Ruffy, get used to going back to games safely, I will then suggest to you that this will become the norm. This will become something that they try and hook people into, which suddenly increases the revenue again, because there's no way we're going back no. once you've opened the door. Yeah, you're right, Peter. Uh, and, and I'm sure most of the, the fans that obviously buy season tickets would prefer to be in the ground. That's why they buy season tickets, to be there. They enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, and I think I think we all know that, I mean, most of the clubs have their own streaming device. At Partick Thistle, we stream, we stream games if there's people paying already for this. So I'm sure that would have to be worked out with the club and Sky. You know, because we have uh, the Jag Zone. You know, we 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 fire at the the home games to the Far East and and Canada and America anyway. So, you know, but I think obviously with Sky getting involved, you would have to say the quality with ten cameras would be fantastic, and I'm sure everybody would buy into that. So I'm, I'm sure the the financial side it can be worked out accordingly. I don't think the clubs the clubs are going to see it as a negative. I don't, I don't think they're going to not listen to it. And uh, I think they will bring it on board. Yeah, j j just to have to clarify something, Ravi, here. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not necessarily going to be 10 cameras. Don't, don't, hang <laughs> no, on no. My, don't, don't hang on my every word. There are some games which... It's ultra HD, Ravi. Yeah. No, but I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a bit better than the one camera we, we see behind us at most of the games, like Hibs film in yeah. the game, and we do it, and I'm sure there are other clubs do it as well. So the quality, I yeah. think, would be a, a lot better. Yeah, well, I can give you an insight into that, Ruffy, and it's only because, obviously, you know, not just in lockdown, but as as the job, you have to try and suck up as much knowledge as possible, technical stuff, dealing with people in the industry. Um, that I, I can tell you that the the SPFL were uh, actually looking at, uh, I think it was a German uh, situation in technology where for games that are out with the big luxury games where you have 20 cameras there at the ground, you have your slow-mo camera, you have your behind the, uh, the goals camera, you have the guy walking around with the one that's attached to the belt. Um, so that's what you call your full OB setup. But I think what the SPFL are now actually looking into is cameras which are permanently there at the grounds and these cameras are tracking cameras tam and what happens is they they have the ability with the technology to actually track the movement of the player with the ball do, do, do you know uh, and, yeah, and, yeah 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 i don't yeah. I, I don't i don't want to to lose everybody with this and be, to become a big bore with it but these cameras track the movement and basically you don't need now the way technology is going, you will not need a full OB team at the ground. People can actually literally control the pictures remotely. that you see remotely. So it right. will all be basically somebody in a central point, much like the, the <clears> referees <throat> are with the, the VAR. They can look, they can see the angles, they'll be sent back to them, and there'll be permanent cameras in certain grounds. So I think that's mm. the way that it'll all start to evolve. Whether that's going to start in August, I, you know, only time will tell. But I know the SPFL have been looking at this. It's it's a tracking camera which picks up the movement of the players, the guy with the ball, and then other angles will come in and your director will push the buttons with the producer and give you the, all, all the different angles for your broadcast of that game. So I don't think, Ruffy, it will be a it will be a kind of a, I'm not, I don't want to use the phrase cheap and nasty production. I think it'll be a far better one because of the demand of the viewers. It's fantastic insight. Yeah, Peter. yeah, I would agree with that, yeah. Yeah, have you been doing this yeah. for a while, Pierre? <laughs> have you been? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I bother helping you two guys. It's a real waste of time, you know. Where's Barry? Barry, come back. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, Kevin McFarlane says, Peter, try and be optimistic. I am optimistic. I'm just giving you... Just giving you He's just giving you 5,000 types of different cameras that can be used. Exactly. He's absolutely buzzing over it. 
It's going to be slick, by the way. And Martin Thompson says, we are in Darwin in Lancashire. Martin's watching on our YouTube channel. He says, I definitely get a virtual season ticket because travelling to the games is hard work. I mean, that's another point here. You know, apart from anything <coughs> else, a lot of people a lot of people want to go and they make a huge journey. I mean, I know uh, lots of Rangers and Celtic fans who come over from Belfast. Boy, they're up at the crack of dawn, hoping mm. that the ferry's on time, everything's all organised. It's, it's like... It, it, it's like military precision, uh, Ruffy, for many fans yeah. across the whole of the Premiership well, to, to get well, to a game. Yeah, but you can see how many fans there are that support clubs who can't get to the games all the time. All you have to see is a team like Motherwell or St. Johnson or Inverness getting to the final of a Scottish Cup. And all of a sudden, instead of 6,000 tickets, they want 6,000 season tickets, they want 20,000, you know, for the games. And that 20,000 is people who can't go to the games week in, week out. So that's the kind of people you're buying into. You people who've moved away from home who can't afford to come up to go at the games. So certainly there's a market there for it. So I'm sure it's worth trying. Yeah, Gary McGurn has made a very good point, Tom, which is one major gap in what's missing here and I don't and I think it's something that we all loved as boys and certainly loved uh, you know when you go to games Gary says Peter clubs will be worse off um, because of course uh, beer food on match days hospitality Pro on programs match days, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah all of that is not mm. there so unless somebody's coming up <laughs> Midway through, you know, this game and says, Don't forget to order your Rangers Blue Burger for next week's match. <laughs> You're not getting it, you know. Home delivery service. Exactly, oh, I was just about to say, you know, you can't exactly turn around to your partner, male or female, and say, Any chance of getting me a burger and a beer? This game's halfway through and I'm not moving um, because you're liable. <laughs> As you know, Robbie, you're liable. <laughs> you're, li you're liable to get a broken jaw, Tom. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, it's a good point you make, so isn't it, Tom? That is, that is a great point. That is a good point. Um, listen, the, the hospitality and the, you know stuff like that brings a lot of money into clubs. You know, sitting down having a meal, going for a pint, business business meetings. You know, freebies. Ruffy's just had a lot of them. Um, listen, I, I, yeah. I just think that. It's the only way. It's the only way we can do it. It's the only way we can do it now. Um, what, yeah. what, what I do hope, what I do hope, Peter, is obviously it's a virtual season tickets, and we're still going to be social distancing. I hope it's not a case of oh, I've got a virtual season ticket for someday. Come on, let's come into my house and we'll have a beer and we'll all watch it. You know, five or five or six of the guys all sitting having a beer watching the game. I think that could be a potential issue, Peter. Yes, on, only an East School Bride man, <laughs> on 20 minutes into the show, only an East School Bride man could work out a how, to do this, how to do the system <laughs> in right away. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, I, can just see, I can just see you, I I can just see you Tom, try to cram a thousand of your pals V school right into that and just charge to watch charge, the game. Charge, 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 charge him a five and uh, a dodgy stream. Uh, I have to tell you, I was do I was hosting a night one night, Ruffy, and the main sponsors were BT, and they had a big table there, you know, and it was it was a football night, right? I'll not say which club, but I was doing this night, and the BT the BT table was there, and all the executives were there, and I said, you know, it's great to see BT here. We love sponsorship, and I says, and so many people in here are are happy with their BT, but there's a few who are not. I says because <coughs> it's affecting the stream from their Cody boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen their faces, honestly. Yeah. And only you can work out a scam right away. Tam's house with a queue of a mile long people all trying to get in to watch to watch the game on one virtual season ticket. Anyway, yeah, but Tam, but you, Tam, if it had, if it added bonus if you come to Tam's because you can get a disco after it. There you go, tiki party right <laughs> after it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. His, Throw it in as a price of the ticket. His, <laughs> well, Tom, I can tell you right now, if your wife comes out in a tiki outfit, Ruffy and me are there on the couch with you. That's exactly it, because that's magnificent. And Dandy Don says, I can't believe it, Peter, you're promoting people not going to games. I have to say to you, I'm not. I'm just telling you what they're offering. But one of the things that you'll never get away from, Ruffy, and this is, I mean, it's, it's difficult times. And it's strange now because there's been such a huge gap uh, between fans being able to go to matches. But the one thing you will never take away, and Tam Cowan mentions it, and, and, and we've lived it, loved it as well. Going to a game 
with your mates, having a pint, going there, sitting down, you, you have your bovril or you have, uh, you know, your hot dog or your burger, you sit there, you have a bit of banter and your team scores and you jump on each other's head and you have a laugh. You will never take that away. At Tam, I give you this. The corner coming in from Liam Henderson for David Gray to header the ball into the net. Where would you rather be, with a virtual season ticket or standing next to your mate in the Hibs end with 10 seconds left of a Scottish Cup final? To finish there'd, probably be more peop- there'd probably be more people in my house watching it than there would be at hand, and that's the only thing. <laughs> you know, that's the <laughs> thing the, about it. the dodgy box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll, never, you'll never take away... You'll nah, never you, won't, you, won't, you, you won't. still cuddle each other, but... You don't take it away. There's nothing better than a last minute goal for your team, whether it's scoring it or you're a supporter or whatever. You know, you, you can't replicate that feeling uh, watching mm-hmm. it through the TV. So, listen, we're, we're all hoping, you know, for Dandy Don's point, we're all hoping to get back watching games as, as quickly as possible. But for now, it gives people a chance to watch, watch their clubs and contribute to their clubs financially. And, uh, yeah. you know, listen, let's hope we're, we're back watching games live. Yeah, Derek Donaldson has said, Tam's only got two pals. So clearly people have got, a, got an insight into Tam at the moment. He's he used to. Two pals. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't me. Can't, no. can't get me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I used, to, uh, I used to say a great thing to, to Davey Foreman. We used to chat about it. And uh, we were talking about friends in football. And he said... Calm yourself. He says, there are no friends. He says, you have acquaintances. They're not real friends. And it always used to, two of us used to look at each other and laugh. And it's such a good point, actually. You meet people over the, the time. I don't know about you, Ruffy, but I, I think I've still got the same five friends that I had when I was at school. Same guys. Still mates. Mm. Never had any pals at school. To tell you, just... <laughs> <laughs> you oh, are, Ruffy's pals are female. I can't, honestly. I, mean, I, I, I don't know what it is, but I mean... People come up to you and say, oh, "Do you remember we were at school?" Now that's forty odd years ago. I mean, what kind of memory? We've all changed. Everybody's changed. You know, I would, I would struggle. You know, to. I, I mean, if I bumped into a couple, I would know them. But that, that would be it. You know, I would dread to. You've been to a reunion. I've never been to a school reunion. I would dread to think what that'd be like. Ruffy, can I tell you something? Uh, one of my friends, she lives in uh, New Zealand sent me a message today saying exactly what you've just said. You know, can you believe it's about 43 years since we started at secondary school and we're all still mates and we all still stay in contact, all the the the, the, the girls and the guys. We, we all keep this little crew and we get together for reunions, but we all stay in contact on Facebook and Twitter. So clearly you... <laughs> You can't hold down no. a mate. That's a disgrace. No, 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 no. I, I know who I would remember. I'd remember Senga McDonald vividly as soon as I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, all, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Senga, if you're out there, send a, send a photograph. Send a now. picture. Send a picture. By the way, can I tell you something? I can just see it now. The search for Senga McDonald. <laughs> Uh, brilliant, <laughs> Anyway, I don't know anything, but um, so uh, lots of people. Uh, uh, Ronnie Ronnie Scott says, Peter, I've been watching Rangers games on uh, TV from Holland for the last fifteen to twenty years. So will that not be possible anymore? Well, I, I would suggest to you, Ronnie, yes, it will, um, b- because you, you know whatever there are some there are some actual uh, companies that will have a subscription or a contract to be allowed to show Scottish football. Um, I think that the real crux of this deal, though, for the season ticket, is to see every game, the ones that are not covered, Tam, by the main yes. broadcaster. Yeah. You know, the con- you know, you've got a contract where the Sky has said, right, we'll have 60 games that we pick for this season that are live, and they get all the razzmatazz and the gloss. The other ones are the ones that you're still going to be able to see. Yeah, listen, a lot of the games are live on TV anyway, <coughs> um, would, would be live, so your three o'clock games, I don't know if you're a Rangers supporter, maybe Rangers against St Murn at home, and a three o'clock kick-off on a Saturday, which wouldn't otherwise be on TV, um, you could you could sit and watch that, um, same with other clubs, so I, I, yeah, I think it is the games that you wouldn't normally see, um, I, I, I just really, I really think it's a great idea, um, I think that the, yeah. the, away, the away games, 
you know, as I said to you earlier, I think that's that could be a pay per view um, opportunity for clubs. You know, as I said to you earlier, if Hibs were playing maybe St. Murn away from home and it wasn't live, we could Hibs supporters yeah. be able to watch that game at, at, at Paisley? You know, well, could, could they pay not, a fee could that, to St. Murn? Well, I was going to say, could that not be on the principle of what you do with Now TV? Or uh, I mentioned them a yeah, couple of months yeah. ago. You remember the company I mentioned, <coughs> Ruffy, called The Zone? Where in Italy yeah. they sell a game for a tenner. You you get the yeah, game. You buy yeah. the game for a tenner. You don't mm-hmm. need to subscribe for the whole month. You just buy mm-hmm. the game. Here's a tenner. Give yeah. me the stream. I think that could be mm-hmm. a. Yeah. Uh, Tom, you're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, now, Tom, if you want to talk about how uh, Ruffy, you know, can't hold down a mate and just brushes them off every now and then. Um, I mean, I'm amazed I've been with him. For, <laughs> I'm amazed I've been with him for eight years. Um, huh? Jim Gowans. <laughs> Jim Gowans has just sent us a message on YouTube and he says, Peter, tell Ruffy I used to go to St. Columbus in Mary Hill and he had a pub just outside it. Do you remember, Jim? I don't remember. <laughs> 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 I, I know where Saint, no, no, I know where St. Columbus is. I mean, I, uh, I, used to, I used to go to Old Bank, uh, was immediately across the road uh, and yeah. obviously it had the wee the religious stuff going on. I mean, two oh, schools so oh, separated aye. by a school. I never, I never. I this is not the show for you, Ruffy. No, I never go. I never. I, I mean, I mean, this guy's talk. This guy's talking about primary school, you know. And uh, yeah. I did eventually get uh, own the pub that was at the corner where Saint Columbus's was. So he is right there. But uh, did, did you work in it, Ruffy? Did you pull the pints in that? Did you? I own. Yeah, yeah, I owned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was right. Mine, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Another okay. disaster. Uh, <laughs> Ruffy, R- Ruffy, show me a successful man <laughs> who doesn't become successful after making mistakes. It's as simple as that. Uh, also, uh, Cheryl has said to us, uh, and it's a good point, and I think it's only right we we highlight this at the moment. Um, which is it's it's home games, and it's only for people who have season tickets. <clears throat> it's capped at that. Uh, it's only for uh, and Celtic have put something out saying it's only for current season ticket holders I'd be amazed uh, I'd be amazed mm. if they don't try it. Well, listen, we've got to wait, if it's capped at season ticket holders then you buy a season ticket but is your season ticket really going to be the same price Tam that it is uh, that it was last season because you're certainly not going you're certainly not going and getting the full uh, you know season ticket feeling are you um, no. You're no longer going to the game, I mean I'd be amazed if somebody paid 350 quid for a season ticket and then you're going to pay the same and have access no. to the games at home. I can't see that. So, 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 what Cheryl's saying for for Celtic or Rangers, you can't buy a, a virtual virtual season ticket. Well, I think you can buy the season ticket on the basis that you're now you now become well. Current season ticket holders will have, have the call on it. I'd be amazed if they capped it because you want as much money in as possible to try. Oh, yeah, and I don't understand the that shortfall make up the shortfall of the madness that's gone before. But I would say to you in this very embryonic stage of the agreement, somebody will explain in greater detail how you can access it, how much it's going to cost, and uh, there's no point in paying for a better seat because you know the nick of your own couch. Uh, So, um, Mm. uh, and also uh, somebody says... uh, (laughs) And Ruffy, uh, Ruffy clearly can't count. He can't remember. Uh, school was about 40 years ago. Um, and then, was it 40 years ago, Ruffy, you were at school? Oh, it'd be longer than that. Be longer than oh, that. Must be 60. Well, no, it's 40, 50, it's 40 50. because. Is it 50? 50. You sure? Because you repeated no, it'd be first more than year, that. five years. You, you, you were yeah. held back in second year uh, for another five <laughs> years. So uh, if it's forty, if it's forty, Robbie, well, you were twenty. It was second year. Forty. Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty. We are teacher, Robbie. Fifty-two. Yeah. Fifty-two years ago. Fifty-two years ago. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That'd have been, that'd have been sixteen. Eh? Is that right, Robbie? That yeah. is absolutely. You sixty eight, Ruffy. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> wow. You look great you're for sixty eight. Well. Yeah, you're looking well. Just need to sort the curtain. Just... Be, you're looking tremendous. I just hope uh, when I bump into Senga, she thinks that and all. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, <laughs> although, although, although my fear, my fear is. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not going to go there. Anyway, let's see <laughs> no. if he finds a, a photograph of Senga. Uh, so, uh, other than that, um, uh, you know, I think uh, lots of people uh, giving us a lot of uh, positive messages about this that they would like to. Um, Jerry Maffin has put in here on uh, Facebook, he says £190 uh, to Celtic TV, every game live, not uh, just not the Europa uh, League. The permutations on this, I think, will have to be explained to everyone. Um, Gary Mercer again points out something which is very valid. Peter, you can buy a season ticket to watch all the Rangers games on Rangers TV. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's the key to it all. I think I think we'll need to get uh, something explained on that. Although I have just noticed, and I, I am going to try and read it out as we go along here, um, some of the um, things that are coming in. And one of them is there's just been a, an issue, uh, a press release coming out from uh, Celtic, which is just dropping at this moment. Uh, and I think I will be able to quickly read that while we're chatting and give you an explanation of how they see this new season ticket as well. <coughs> so, apart from that, James Anderson, Ruffy, 5 million, just under 5 million. Uh, <coughs> and once once that gets, uh, you know, concrete, on the paper, signed deal, then suddenly 42 clubs will get a slice of that pie. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and we keep talking about it on the show. Some clubs will be better off than others. But for the ones who are the others who are at this particular moment in time really feeling the pressure and really, I mean, we, we just have to look at the, the players that are getting released at clubs just now. And the, the first excuse is we have to let you go. It's because financially we, we can't keep a hold of you. So there'll be other clubs the same. So for the clubs that we thought might be we might lose, it's a breath of fresh air for them and it's a lifeline. And uh, well done to the guy. You know, a, a lot of us didn't know who this chap was. But certainly if there was a lot more people like that in the world, the world would be a better place. Uh, and I'm sure it's not just us he's helping. I'm sure he's, he's, he's doing a lot of good things. And it's brilliant that, that somebody with that amount of money uh, can do that. And uh, well, well done to him. You know, fantastic. I think every club should be, oh, they, they will be in his debt, but uh, more so uh, a, a big thanks from everybody. Tom? Listen, I'm slightly cynical of it. Um, I don't want to be. <clears throat> Listen, if he comes, if he comes in, Peter, and you know he gives this money away, and with no caveat of of anything towards Hearts in terms of them staying in the division or reconstruction, then I will apologise to Ann Budge because I had a little bit of a go on uh, Ann Budge on social media <clears throat> when this first came out because I felt there was a, maybe a little bit of financial blackmail, even emotional blackmail, on, on a week where clubs are voting. You know, to for reconstruction or maybe to save hearts. <coughs> you know, James Anderson, a heart supporter, and Budge's close friend, a guy who's put in three or four million pounds into hearts only, um, comes in, comes forward with this money. Now the timing for me is just a little bit suspect. You know, if it was maybe six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, then maybe I would have been less, you know, suspect of this. But listen, if he comes out and it's it's just giving free money with with no attack, no strings attached, then. Listen, I take my hat off to the guy, um, but it's still to be still to be seen, still to be arranged, um, and I, I will offer a full apology to Ann Budge if, if if this comes out and you know there's no strings attached and James Anderson has given this money away um, to clubs to help Scottish football as a whole. I know sometimes, uh, Tam, uh, you don't answer your phone. Just basically when it suits you, you're one of those moody footballers who every, every now and then, roughly, if you call him, he just blanks your call. You know, the ones that just give you a custard pie. So I, I have the paper here, Tam. I'm not sure if you want. Do you want me to send a pen round as well? And, and you can start, dear Anne, I apologise unreservedly. I just, I'm just i giving you an opening paragraph here just on the basis that you can only take the man at his word and he said there's no strings attached. You know, he's given Hearts £9 million already So and he said no strings attached. So um, I'll get that pen over to you as well, Tam. But nevertheless, <laughs> we, we are all, uh, we all have that cynical attitude to it. But to be fair, productive talks, is exactly what Neil Doncaster said. And then over and above the productive talks, he did mention uh, that they hope to get some kind of concrete proposal in writing. In the week, Tam, where we're waiting on the email back from the Premiership clubs on whether they're going to take to reconstruction. 
Yeah, but listen, it's a, it's a critical week for Scottish football. You know, and listen, we've, we've been very firm on this show uh, for a number of weeks that no club should be worse off. You know, I, I've been an advocate of 14, 10, 10, 10 since, since March. You know, I feel as if that is, that is a system, that is a reconstruction of the leagues that would help everyone in this current situation. No one would be worse off, no one would be relegated, and you would promote a couple of teams, Kelty um, and Brora Rangers. So that, that would be my preference. But if it's reconstruction of another manner, then fine, you know. But to leave it the way it is at the moment, um, I just think it's, it's going to cripple clubs. So I think we need to do something, mm -hmm. whether the clubs <clears throat> vote for that. Listen, I, I don't know. Um, I, I hope they do. No, I, I was just going to say, Peter, do you not think the the change from the 14, 10, 10, 10, you know, and going to 14, 14, 14 has put more people against the league reconstruction. It seems to have more people complaining about 14, 14, 14. I just wonder why we drifted away from 14, yeah. 10, 10, 10. I don't understand, you know, it, voting two extra people in is the easiest way out. And you're not upsetting everybody in the championship, first division, second division. And now this chap's come in and offered the clubs, I think it works at something like £120,000 each. That's the kind of money that the the, the clubs in the SPL were complaining that they were going to lose if they invited another two teams two teams in. So that's that sort of spoken for. So the only other thing must be is they don't want the chance to get relegated. Well, uh, to be honest with you, I think the overriding factor, which I think has been truly disturbing, <clears> is <throat> the fact that some clubs, some chairmen, some chief executives are petty-minded and have, uh, you know, this not only self-preservation but a vindictive attitude towards hearts, maybe about the way they've gone about their business on it, um, maybe they feel as if it's about saving hearts. It's not about that. I think they've lost the thread of what this is all about. Um, and basically, apart from the overall, let's not forget, by the way, a year from now, they were actually going to sit down and consider reconstruction anyway that was on the table to be discussed it's only been accelerated because we are in a, an unusual situation which um has forced us down a line where clubs are suffering we still could go down into a situation where a number of clubs can say well we this is all this is the only time we can start playing we're not going to be able to do it with no fans inside the ground so we're not going to be able to continue you know with even with james anderson's money there's a long way we hope vaccinations come if there's a vaccination which allows suddenly everybody by uh, November, December to, to be able to start to slowly integrate in greater numbers. Great. If there's testing and tracing and tracking, great. Um, but right now, all the way through 2020, no fans means that some clubs will be forced into saying, hey, we're holding our hands up. We can't survive here. So mm -hmm. I think, Ruffy, there's a there's still a few twists and turns along the way. I don't <coughs> know if they've got it in for Anne Budge on a personal basis here, but any chairman who's voting that way needs to stick, take a step back. It's not a crime to change and reconstruct. It's not about mm -hmm. hating hearts. It should be about looking and saying, how do we protect everyone here and try and be fair and <coughs> try and keep the clubs going? I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. That, that is what it's all about. But you, you've touched on it earlier, Peter, that a lot of the clubs don't see that. We've seen Elgin coming out. We've seen Stenhouse Muir coming out. It's some of the, even Air United coming out. And everybody's got different views, you know, of, of all these permutations of what we're going to go down. I just think promoting two of the Premiership is the least troublesome way to go, you know, because I, I don't get you know, the, the SPL clubs who are voting against it because if you invite another two in uh, and then we get relegated down the road, surely another two teams coming in enhances you more chance not to be relegated. Do you know what I mean? Surely more teams well, in gives you a better chance to go up the league rather than down the way. Well, that, that depends on your strategy as a board, Ruffy. Because if you've yeah. got a situation where you think Kelty Hearts and Borough Rangers have got more money than you, then it will excel. It, it won't alter your no, position. It will. They, no, they will I, bypass you. No, no. I was just talking about the SPL. I'm just talking about the, the top league. I'm yeah. just talking all about right. the top league. The 14 coming in there. No, I know where you're coming from. I think we all know what's happening down in the second division. But in the top league, 
I would have thought the teams who are down the bottom all the time, Hamilton, St Mirren, the likes of Dundee United coming in and possibly Inverness, surely you'd be saying to yourself, well, we've got a wee bit a better chance of staying in the league. Instead of being down the bottom all the time, we might Ruffy. be a wee bit further up. That would be a positive look that I'd be looking at. It would d depend on how many clubs went down the following season. They were talking about maybe three clubs. You know, it was a short-term fix and maybe the following season, maybe three mm -hmm. teams going down or whatever. Yeah. But, so maybe well, that was a, a fear well, so, factor. Well, well, sometimes you have to go easy on that. So if you want it to go through, just change it. If that's the stumbling block, you've got to back off and say, look, this is the deal. Yeah, but I think, I think some people are not caring what the proposal is. There are some people out there who say, I don't care what the proposal is. We, we don't like Hearts. We don't like Anne Budge. We don't like the way she's gone about it. I think they're wrong. I think they should take yeah. a step back, look at the proposal and say, look, if it's short term, fine, and then we review it and maybe go longer term with it if it's a, a success. But right now, how do you keep every club going? How can you be fair to them? What about the ones that are being unfairly relegated? Can we get to a situation where there's a short-term view on this and it's not about personal, I hate to use the word, hatred on this situation, not, not about your personal view or vendetta against certain individuals. That should not be looked upon here. Have you noticed, Ruffy, that every time Tam fixes his uh, Wi-Fi, he moves further out of the frame, doesn't he? He just, <laughs> sometimes he just gets smart. Ah, there you are. Ah, there you are. Ah, ah, there you are looking better. We don't, we don't want to see just the left arm, Tam. We want to see the other arm as well. Uh, Celtic <laughs> Football Club have released a statement uh, uh, welcoming the, under, uh, uh, the work undertaken by uh, the SPFL and Sky and the uh, virtual season ticket. Um, is basically what they're saying is that this will be available as part of season ticket offering, meaning Celtic season ticket holders will have exclusive access to every home league match uh, in this season coming up. This online access will be available to season ticket holders while social distancing measures prevent fans from attending matches. <coughs> so they'll be announcing more detailed plans in the next few days. Uh, Celtic season ticket holders who have already renewed for the season will have access to the virtual season ticket as part of as part of their season <coughs> ticket, Tam. So that's an interesting so, point so, there. As, so it's what, not, what, is, it's not, what does the season ticket get you? A free scarf and a jacket as well? Sure, sure, surely it just... Surely that just covers you for your virtual season ticket, the money you've paid. So they're going to charge extra for the virtual season ticket. It's not quite clear there on that. Well, access to the no, virtual so season that, ticket... Yeah. It, this, this sentence says access to the virtual season ticket as part of their season ticket. Yeah. So there must be something yeah. else in there. Yeah. There must be. Yeah. Anyway, oh. apart from anywhere else, that's the way to access it. You can buy a season ticket. You'll get a chance to see the games, every home game. You happy with that, Ruffy? Yep. Well, I think it's a double right. whammy for the clubs because you're, you're going to get your season tickets buying into it and you're still going to be selling your own uh, people who can't go to games at any time. So they're still going to buy into, you know, watching the game if they're over in Canada or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I think it's just more income coming into the club. I wonder what happens with people who've got a Sky subscription as well. I don't know. There's so many different things here that have to be, we'll have to delve into to people who might look and say, well, I'll only buy it. And remember, by the way, there's no BT Sport this season. It's mm. all Sky for the games. They've got this for the next five years. So it's an interesting one. Anyway, apart from that, I'll try and give out a, a mention to a number of people as well who've been talking to us uh, on here. Um, and Stephen McDowell says, what about the people that can't afford bra broadband? Stephen, uh, believe me, I know there's lots of people who can't afford Sky, can't afford a season ticket. There are so many uh, that will face uh, the problems. Um, no atmosphere with fans uh, inside the ground. The game's finished, says Willie Gibson. Uh, it's all about opinions, Willie. We value you offering uh, yours as well. Uh, listen, um, i just got to tell you guys, might as well tell you this, uh, Tam. Um, I don't know if you, in your house, uh, because we've been in lockdown, you start to get more and more time uh, on your own, where you think, what am I going to do? And then you start uh, opening boxes. Are you a hoarder, Tam? Uh, not really, but my wife is. She's a hoarder. Is she? Yes. Oh, right. I, I, yes. I love your wife already. Ruffy, are you a hoarder? 
Uh, no particularly, no, but I do go into some no. drawers and find things that I've never seen for three or four years, but I don't do that deliberately. A hairbrush. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I think that goes back to the single McDonald's story, but nevertheless, uh, let's crack on. <laughs> so, so I mean, get out of these, I, I keep boxes, I'm a hoarder. Love, love the uh, football stuff, Tam, but uh, I don't know if you can see that, Tam. What about that? What do you make it? Tam. How the hell is that? that? What is it's, that? Gaza. it's a Gaza cup. Right. Was oh, that a mug? Gaza mug. It's a Gaza mug. It's a Gaza mug. <laughs> Honestly, how did I, look at that. That's mental. I opened this box and I thought, why? Uh, why would I have a Paul Gascoigne uh, mug? It's an absolute belter. But yeah, that would be. Well, absolutely, it'd be worth a few quid. But Ruffy, I'm just going to bend over here at the moment uh, to show you something which, again, is absolutely. So I'm in this box, Ruffy, and I started uh, I started pulling things out. Just shows you how much you love football down through the years. And I found I found this. I don't know if you can see that, Ruffy. That's an Ipswich Town pen yeah. to to yeah, mark yeah. them winning the UEFA Cup and the FA Cup, right? So God knows oh. how, how I managed to get that. And here's my cracker when I was over in America on two occasions, Ruffy. What about that? Can you answer that phone, Ruffy, while you're at it? Can you see um, that? A New York Cosmo, yeah. Who was playing for them then? Uh, Pelly. So, and this is the one that I think you're really going to like, Ruffy. I brought this out and I thought to myself, now, Tam, you're talking about people who are committed. I'm talking about real football fans. If you were young and you were at school, Tam, and you got one of these, this was the early Panini sticker album. Okay, yeah, this right, is the yep. one, Ruffy. This is the one for the 1974 World Cup, Ruffy. Wow. And it's absolutely incredible. And because I think I, I think it was nine at the time, uh, Ruffy, and every one of them, every one of them, and I'm going to hold this one out because it's it needs to be uh, stuck down again. But every one of the uh, every one of the the stickers is in it, including and I don't know if you can see it, Ruffy. I'm going to try and hold it over. Can you see that? I can All see the, the film site. All the Scotland from 1974. They're all there. And do, Billy Bremner, and do, you, David Harvey. <laughs> how do you keep these things in pristine condition for all this time? What do you do? You deliberately just store them somewhere? Keep them in a box. Keep it nice, fresh. Yeah. Look back. Look back at these things yeah. when you're, you were a kid. Well, Never throw them away, Ruffy. It's absolutely. No. I, I actually pulled out, and this might appeal to you, Tam. I pulled out um, the uh, Paul Weller tour um, mm -hmm. magazine as well. Did you buy the programs and things like that? Do you buy those old things when you go to concerts, Tom? No. I never, I've never been to a concert before. What? <laughs> I've never been to a concert. <laughs> I haven't, honestly. You've never been to a, you've never been to a pop concert? No. Ever? No. You haven't, no. Seen, you haven't seen Simple Minds at the Barrowlands when everybody's going no, mental no. jumping no. each other's head? No. Who, Ruffy, who hired him? No. This, guy's a, this guy's a loser. <laughs> Honestly, he's, he's on disco night with his wife. He's got no mates, and he's never been to a concert. No, you need to have a look at yourself, Ruffy. What's your favourite concert of all time? Oh, I saw the Who. Uh, I saw the Who oh. live in the in the Apollo in Glasgow. Uh, Electric Light Orchestra, uh, Ingelson, absolutely uh, amazing, fantastic. Gutted that I couldn't see the Killers. Uh, that gets postponed at Falkirk there. Uh, yeah. They're my favourite just now, but uh, no, un unbelievable. Uh, I actually saw the Everly Brothers in, uh, in Edinburgh as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I went. Wow. I went. I went. Is that the fifties? I know. They, they, they came. They came, oh, and they I went to see. I got. I got because I was at Hibs at the time. I got uh, the chance to go backstage and meet the the boys from Aha. The, oh, the group they played Morton uh, Harkett. Morton Harkett. Yeah. Yeah, really nice, big yeah. football guys, mental football guys, and uh, yeah, who did they support? Was, uh, well, they were supporting Hibs since they were in, in the in the village in, in the town. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, and I also one of, one of my other ones uh, I got when I was at Hibs, and I actually gave them, I gave them a jersey. I gave them one of my jerseys was uh, Marillion Fish. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a big Hibs supporter. He had him. He he'd stayed down there neck of the woods. So, oh, the the, yeah. the gigs in Edinburgh. There were there was one every week. You could have went to a show, 
every week in Edinburgh, you know. And Ruffy. my favourite, my wait, my favourite that I got to meet was Dustin Hayward from Moody Blues. I got to meet oh. him in, in Edinburgh. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Great. I'll tell you better. So if you've, never, I... if you've never been to a gig, you know, you're, you're missing these things. Oh, you don't get to meet honestly... anybody if you don't go to the gigs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Robbie, could you tell you what I was singing? He just was at the gigs. Yeah. That's all he said. Ah, uh, it, it, yes, absolutely. Mal Ross says hi from the Fi the Philippines. He's a big Rangers fan. Mal, Mal, great to have you on board, uh, and thank you very much for taking the time to mention uh, it all on here. And lots of people are saying Tam needs to get out. They can't believe you've never been <laughs> to a concert. Ninth Legion says he's seen Pink Floyd, Radiohead, The Clash. Uh, I mean, I just cannot believe it. And Ed, Eddie Gray uh, has said that he's seen the police at the Apollo, which is absolutely unbelievable. Some fantastic concerts. I think the last time, uh, the last concert I saw at the Apollo, Ruffy, was just before it closed down. Wait for it. Ultravox. Oh, fantastic. Oh, cool am I right in saying... Uh... Uh, here's a here's a here's a, a, a trivia here's a trivia yeah. question for you. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Mid years mid years song Vienna. Yes. Yeah. Who whose cat was called you know, whose cat was called <laughs> Vienna? Whose cat? Is it a football is cat? it a footballer? No, 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 it's a sitcom, it was on the telly. Leonard Ross. Uh, rising Dam uh, Rising Dam. Yes, his cat was <laughs> called Vienna. Right, so that's this week's competition, folks. Uh, that's <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> oh, oh, Ruffy. Ruffy, Ruffy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> only Ruffy could come up with something that took us right off uh, the uh, train of thought. Anyway, here's, here's a look at the uh, nominees for the manager of the year that were announced uh, just uh, a couple of days ago by the SFWA. Neil Lennon led Celtic to their ninth title in a row this season. This was a run the ex-Hoops captain started himself back in 2012. Lennon's side had amassed 80 points before the shutdown. 26 wins out of 30 gave the Hoops a 13-point lead at the top. Celtic also won the League Cup for the fourth season in a row. A quadruple treble could still be on the cards with the Scottish Cup semi-final yet to be played. Stephen Robinson steered Motherwell to a third place finish. The Steel men will be rewarded with European football next season. Under Robinson, Motherwell racked up 14 wins, 4 draws and 12 defeats. The Fir Park side pipped Aberdeen to third place by a single point. The Northern Irishman has won plaudits for rebuilding his squad on a minimal budget. Livingston secured fifth spot in their second season back in the top flight. The top six finish is an improvement on last season's ninth place. Holt has turned the Tony Macaroni Arena into a fortress. Livy picked up a win over Celtic before earning a draw against the champions later in the season. His robust style of play saw Livy rack up 10 wins, 9 draws and 11 defeats. Dick Campbell is the only nomination from a part-time team. The legendary Scott led our broth to 5th in the championship. An impressive feat when you consider Partick Thistle, Queen of the South and Dunfermline sit lower than our broth in the table. 10 wins, 6 draws and 10 defeats led to the top 6 finish. Yeah, uh, four good candidates there, Tom. <clears throat> who, who, who gets your vote? Um, listen, I think we, we spoke about it before. I know a lot of people will vote for Neil Lennon, uh, Celtic, you know, but I've got to go for Gary Holt. And, I, and I'll tell you why I've got to go for Gary Holt. I just feel that them getting into fifth place, we probably, I, I think after Hamilton Ackies, they'd probably have the lowest budget in the Premiership. Um, for them to be in fifth place, they're punching miles above their weight, miles above budget. Celtic are the richest club in, in the league, you know, the, the biggest budget, you know, even the Dwarf, even Rangers budget, you know, and I just feel Celtic are where they should be. And I, I, I looked at uh, Dick Campbell as well, you know, only part-time you know, part team in that league, you know, fifth, you know, look at some of the clubs below them and the budgets they've got. <coughs> so I would rather go for a manager who's punched above their weight in terms of performance rather than going with a guy who's got the biggest budget, who's won everything. Um, so I'm going to go for Gary Holt, just isn't it, from Dick Campbell. Ruffy? Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with anything Tam said. I think the three other candidates uh, have done fantastically well with the budgets they've got, uh, and particularly Dick Campbell. Uh, you know, I think they've, they've been absolutely outstanding. But for me, 
It's all about winners and it's all about winning things, you know, and I, I, I'd like to take the budgets into it, but I'm not. I think Neil Lennon, his team's playing a brand of football that's exciting to watch. Uh, good players, players actually rising their game because of the manager. If you hear them all talking now, they all seem to be better players. Uh, they're enjoying their football. And I, th I, I just think to win cups and win leagues uh, and I know he's got a big advantage over everybody else with the financial side yet but for me it, it's, it's Neil Lennon Yeah so so in your mind then uh, the manager of the year is only someone who's won something Somebody that's won something played good football, attractive football joy to watch no, no. and uh, is, it know, is it for winners? Is it for winners? No, I like winners, winners. You've just, All right, I no, you've say just said winner, no for yeah. me it's for, yeah, So every yeah, year, whoever yeah, wins yeah, the league is the manager yeah. of the year yeah. No, no, if you win the league and you win the cup <laughs> and you've got a so chance to win the trail Oh, if I'm on Aki's finished second in the league next year behind Celtic you wouldn't give no, it the manager. The Rangers. It depends what Rangers have done. If Rangers have won two cups or some Hibs have won two cups and yeah. that kind of thing, you know, the, the budget thing, I, I, I get where you're coming from, I really do, but yeah. no, you're not, not having for it. me. No. no. Yeah. And if what, what happens if, uh, what, what was happening if Hibs won the League Cup and the Scottish Cup and Celtic won the league? Um, who, who gets it? Oh, would be Hibs would get it then. Because they've oh, won right, two okay. cups, <laughs> don't wonder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. by the way, if you've got uh, two Quenchy Cups and a Kit Kat and you finish second in the league, mm -hmm. uh, but you're not a winner, you're not getting Ruffy's vote. It's as simple nope. as that. Is that fair, Tom? Yeah. yeah, you're not getting it. No, you've got to yeah. win. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you could yeah. be you could be part-time. Our both Dick Campbell could have finished runner-up this year and you wouldn't have got it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ruffy's, Ruffy's really booked. Well, listen, listen, the one thing about this date is a very, very famous date indeed. June the 3rd. Uh, well, it was 128 years ago <coughs> that a famous club was formed. On this day in June 3rd, 1892, Liverpool Football Club was formed. Over the 128 years since, they have won 47 major honours, including six European Cups, 18 League Championships, one FIFA Club World Cup, seven FA Cups and eight League Cups. There you go, boys. 128 years ago, Ruffy, and uh, it looks as if they're closing in on title number 19, uh, chasing down Fergie, who had completely turned the tables on them. Yeah, and certainly, you know, there was an era when it was all Liverpool, uh, best players, as you've just said there, winning everything in sight, playing the style of football that nobody could compete with and uh, kept buying the right players at the right time. Uh, European Cup, no winners. Uh, it was just must have been a great place. And you can see why they've been thriving to get back there. You can see why the supporters have been so miffed about everything happening everywhere else, Man City and Man United. But now this year, they've got a chance to get back to where they were. And, and a club with a lot of... Tra tradition you know but for me it's the players that they had at that time at that era yeah can you can, here's a point guys um tam can you name the four most famous names that you could think of associated with liverpool when you think of their history uh bill shankley um kenny dalgleish uh graham Sunnis, and Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, okay. Um, I would agree with Shankly, Ruffy. I would go Bob <coughs> Paisley, Kenny Dalglish, and I think Stephen Gerrard from the modern era. I think th those four yeah. names, I'm not, I'm not too sure Graham yeah, is fondly remembered with Liverpool. Yeah, for, I would a, go a back. Memory. I, I, I would go back. Not, not a lot. Uh, further than that, I I would throw Kevin Keegan into that mix. Yeah, uh, I, I would also throw John Toshak into that mix, uh, and obviously Emlyn Hughes, captain. He's you know yeah. Ian St John. Yep, yeah. Ian St John. Yep, yeah, yeah going going back yeah. that far. Yeah, big, yeah, it's an players. interesting one. Uh, Niall Kane says, if I'm picking manager here, it's got to be uh, Motherwell manager Stephen Robinson. Um, Niall's a big Motherwell fan. Um, nevertheless, so 
it's always good to pick your did, to pick your, Peter, your favorite. Didn't 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 uh, Stevie Clark get it last year? The, the, the football writers was it last year? We were at the do. Yeah, yeah. Stevie, did Ruff, did Ruff, Stevie did vote for? He never won anything. Did Ruffy vote for Stevie Clark that year? Even no, though he never won anything. No, no, we had right. to. Uh, we we had to get Ruffy thrown out last year. He just kept shouting, "Loser, you've won nothing." <laughs> Stevie Clark just had to get just had to. Had to throw Ruffy out. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't shouting as loud as a certain manager when Mix and Pat Alignan won it. <laughs> I know. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, thanks to Don Clark, who's mentioned Ray Clemenson. Lots of people. Sammy Lee, Clemens, Bruce yeah. Grobbler. Uh, you could go. Steve there. Highway. Oh, Steve Highway was such a good player, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a great player as well. They, they went through a, a period, as every club um, does, where they signed players that I really didn't think were... I didn't think they were Liverpool-style players, but, um, you know, I'm not going to mention them just in case one of their cousins is on and slaughters <laughs> me. You know what it's like, Tom. Uh, I'm not like you, just mention it and then <laughs> run away into a dark room and, and ask if they're all away. Uh, anyway, uh, last thing to finish on, uh, thanks to so many people, um, who are on, who have contributed with their concerts as well. Someone actually mentioned there that they'd seen The Who as well, Ruffy, and enjoyed that. There's been some great mentions of some great people uh, that they've all watched uh, down through the years and, of course, some great players uh, and contributing Peter, to what we've been talking about with the virtual season ticket. Tam? Why don't the three of us go for my first <coughs> concert for three years of going to see the Pussycat Dolls? I'm up for that. Well, I know Ruffy's definitely Pussy, up for it. The Pussycat are Dolls they? are no longer they're, they're together. They're playing in Glasgow. Are they? are playing in Glasgow. Well, they were, well, they were this year because my wife is going with my niece. I don't know if it's been rearranged, but they're definitely playing in Glasgow. Are they getting back together? They're back together, yeah. Well, I have if, to if, tell you, if, Tam. I have to tell you, I took my daughter to see Little Mix uh, and we were there at the concert and I would gleefully... <clears throat> have yeah. put up with Ruffy scalping me over the head with a baseball bat for two hours. <laughs> it, was, it was hard going because oh. <laughs> uh, I had to sit my hard daughter. Girl. My daughter turned around at one minute, halfway through the concert, and she says to me, Dad, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> and I thought, it was, <laughs> and I, thought oh, I, was nearly, I was nearly greeting, honestly, but it was, <laughs> the concert was rank rotten. <laughs> Ruffy, I don't know about you. Oh, I can it's imagine. Like yeah. No, oh, but... It was hard going. No, Depends Tom, how close you're to the front, Tom, Ruffy. If Tam if Tam can get me backstage to meet the pussy cat dolls, I'll go with you. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't think of anything worse than sitting through that. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, something else has come out, and I want you guys to have a go at this. Uh, France Football, which is a magazine, a uh, football magazine, Ruffy, um, has basically come up with the top clubs in the world for atmosphere. And I wonder if you can make a go of giving me the top five, Ruffy. Can you have a stab okay. and see how many you can get? And I'll see how many Tam can get. Top right. five clubs in the world voted the best atmosphere. Go on. Well, I've got to go Barcelona as one. Uh, uh -huh. I've got to go Dortmund. Uh-huh. Uh, I've got to go Celtic Park. Because, uh, the why do you, why do you have to – why do you keep – why do you keep saying I've got to go? Just give me the names. I'm going to go Celtic. Celtic. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Liverpool. Uh, uh -huh. I'm going to go Real Madrid. Uh-huh. One more. That? Four. And I'm, go I'm going to go... Bayern. Bayern. Oh, good right. to get... Yeah. The, the, is that the Olympic Stadium or the Allianz Arena? Whatever one that is on your list. Yeah. Right, okay. well, <laughs> Tom. Peter, for me, he's missed, he's missed a, he, he's a glaring omission there. Boca, oh. Boca Juniors. Boca Juniors for me, one. Yeah, yep. Um, uh, Tyne Castle. And Kenyan France Lang. football. <laughs> I'm France just going to, footballs 
the top <laughs> the top fifty atmospheres <laughs> in the world in France Football's magazine <laughs> and little Jean Claude <laughs> Villejean <laughs> is writing down Tyne Castle. Castle. I ask you, Tom, honestly, are you going to go with Tyne Castle? I'm not going to go with, but uh, it would be my <laughs> top five. Right. Ah, right. Ah. It would be. It would be. I think it's the best atmosphere in, in Scotland, uh, Tyne Castle. But anyway, I'll go Boca mm. Juniors. Uh, Borussia Dort. I'll go for Dortmund. Um, Anfield. Uh, two more. You've got one more now. <sighs> New Camp. New Camp. Okay. Uh, Here they are. Here's the five. Uh, number one, the best atmosphere voted for by France football uh, is La Bombonera, Boca Juniors. So that's number one. Uh, yes. Good shout, Tom. Uh, that's one derby that I really would love to go and see, Boca Juniors yeah. against River Plate. The only problem was I'd need to take uh, security. security with me. <laughs> yes, just to get me out alive. Um, number two in this is Anfield, Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Number three is the Westfalen, Borussia Dortmund. Mm -hmm. uh, and number four is the Maracana in Red Star, Belgrade. Mm -hmm. What? So, oh, not, right. not, the, yeah. not, not the Maracanã in, uh, in in Brazil, Rafi. And the reason why I think they've picked that, excuse me, the reason why they've picked that, Rafi, is when I was over there, I think Red Star Belgrade were playing Rangers, and I was over there at the game, and the guy who was taking all the journalists on a, a touring mission said to us, and I'll never forget this atmosphere, Tom, we walked into the stadium, and... We were there and the ultras from the Red Star Belgrade were in and we were in two mm. hours before the game was kicking off. Now there yeah. was about 20,000 20, of them were in there and he said there are no police in this section. These guys basically decide when they come in. These guys decide when they leave and if anybody tries to go into a seat that they're not supposed to be in, they get the living daylights kicked out of them. And... And honestly, you could see people fighting in there and there was no police going in to sort it out. The atmosphere by the time Rangers took to the field, honestly, it was, mm. it, it, was, it. It, was it was mental. Um, so I can understand that. And the fifth one, Ruffy, the Napoli. fifth best atmosphere in the world is Celtic Park. France football. So there you have it. Mm. Yeah. Would, yeah. Is that a 3-2-1? Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, yep, well. I think it is, Ruffy. You managed Tyne to Castle just, number uh, six. No. <laughs> Tyne, Tyne, Tyne Castle, Castle, Tam, amazingly, because it is, I was joking with you, amazingly because it's France football that we're looking at all these, and you've mentioned Tyne Castle. Tyne Castle is 987, uh, 987 yeah. best atmosphere in France That's football, shocking. Tam. Tyne Castle, unbelievable. <laughs> I've just gone through them all there, and it's at 987. Ignorant, ignorant French. It, Tyne Castle for me is one of the best atmospheres, uh, yeah. uh, certainly in Scottish football. Yeah. It's fantastic. Do we, do, like we, do, we, do we have many French listeners at all? Yes. Or have we just uh, lost, quite, we just lost quite, a, a, just lost a few. Quite, quite a few. <laughs> There's a, just got a message there. Just got a message from uh, Jane Birkin. Uh, <laughs> who's just sent a message. I'll see if you can work out who Jane Birkin was. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, all of all objective, subjective uh, on uh, subjective. I beg your pardon on who you support, what games you've been to. Can you look at a ground and say, okay, it's got a better atmosphere than my favourite team? Um, apart from that, uh, listen. Uh, thanks to everyone who's contributed. You can like, share, and follow us on Facebook, please do so. Uh, as ever, um, very, very privileged to be an ambassador for Show Racism, the red card. And as ever, we like to welcome people who are football fans to this program. Uh, and we like people to be passionate. Yes, by all means, be uh, critical if you want to and offer a fair and balanced view uh, on football. Um, so, with that in mind on YouTube as well, if you love the program, then don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button there and on Periscope and at PLZ Soccer on Twitter. But uh, I certainly enjoyed the old banter. Get into your boxes, guys, and see if you've got a wee bit of memorabilia. I don't know about you, Ruffy, I want to see if it's in Ruffy's. <laughs> yeah. Tam needs to get something in the back wall. Your wall's, your wall's good, Ruffy. I'm here, obviously, in this bit because there's no point in me taking that big sign down, Ruffy. Oh, he's away for something. Tam, Tam, 
It's like a wedding, wedding photograph. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Is that your wedding? Is that your wedding that? photograph? Yeah. Are you sure yeah. that's is that is that a photo for Love Island? My, By my the way, my dad's <laughs> the guy from the, the planes, the planes, the planes. <laughs> the way, can I, can I just say something? <laughs> I cannot believe Tom got married in the Liverpool FA Cup final suit from 1992 Space against yeah. Sunderland. That is unbelievable. <laughs> but uh, I don't know about you, but that was a mistake you showing us the girl that you married because. <laughs> Ruffy oh, is definitely oh. going to get some tickets for a concert now. <laughs> By the way, Senga McDonald, don't bother writing in. Ruffy's found a new target. That's magnificent. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, join us if you can tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be speaking to uh, former Motherwell captain Peter Hartley. He's our special guest tomorrow. And on Friday, uh, if you get a chance, join us as well, because I'm not going to tell you his name, but one of my favourite Rangers midfielders is a guest on the programme. We're really looking forward to chatting. To him, but Peter Hartley tomorrow. Uh, from Tam, from Ruffy, and myself, Peter Martin, to football fans everywhere. Uh, believe me, all lives matter. And right now, we'll finish the way we started this program by thanking you for watching. Uh, and of course, hopefully, you'll join us tomorrow. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.